Hey there, welcome to lesson 36. Let's dive in. My holiness envelops everything I see. Today's idea extends the idea for yesterday from the perceiver to the perceived. You are holy because your mind is part of God's. And because you are holy, your sight must be holy as well. Sinless means without sin. You cannot be without sin a little. You are sinless or not. If your mind is part of God's, you must be sinless, or part of his mind would be sinful. You follow that? Your sight is related to his holiness, not your ego, and therefore not your body. So this is a very heavy, maybe not so heavy, but just important paragraph. Um, those of us who have uh, religious backgrounds um, may still hold on to the idea of sin. And this is something I love about The Course in Miracles. It says, we are sinless. It's impossible for us to sin. So we can let go of that idea. And I think a lot of people's guilt and shame comes from the idea of sin and that they're a sinner, which is just not true. I know you might think, no, but that's what I learned at church. Well, forget it, because... We are not sinners, because think about it. I'm going to read this part again, and let's just kind of look at it. You cannot be without sin a little. So you're either, you either have sin or you don't have sin. You can't just be a little sinful. It's a, it's a completely black and white thing. Yes or no. Do you have sin? Do you not? And technically, none of us is perfect. So you'd say we're all sinful, but that's where this course makes a distinction. So if your mind is part of God's, you must be sinless or part of his mind would be sinful. So we are part of God. We cannot have sin because God can't have sin. So if we are part of God, we can't have sin. So then this is the line that brings it all home. Your sight is related to his holiness, not your ego and therefore not your body. So our ego and our body may do things that we interpret and perceive to be sinful, but who we are at our core, the true self, the being within, is perfect, is sinless, and is of God. Okay. It's just true. All right, let's just keep going. Four three to five minute practice periods are required for today. Try to distribute them fairly evenly and make the shorter applications frequently to protect your protection throughout the day. The longer practice periods should take this form. First, close your eyes and repeat the idea for today several times slowly. Then open your eyes and look quite slowly about you, applying the idea specifically to whatever you note in your casual survey. Say, for example, my holiness envelops that rug. My holiness envelops that wall. My holiness envelops these fingers. My holiness envelops that chair. My holiness envelops that body. My holiness envelops this pen. Several times during these practice periods, close your eyes and repeat the idea to yourself. Then open your eyes and continue as before. For the shorter exercise periods, close your eyes and repeat the idea. Look about you as you repeat it again and conclude with one more repetition with your eyes closed. All applications should, of course, be made quite slowly, as effortlessly and unhurriedly as possible. So, my holiness envelops everything I see. You may not see yourself as holy right now, but you are. The deepest, truest part of you is perfectly holy. And that holiness coming from deep within can and does extend to everything everywhere. And this is just a little step into that idea. So try it. See what ideas come to you. Maybe nothing comes to you. But be open to experiencing more than what is written on the page. So like always, I'd love to hear about your experience in the comment section or by email. Take care and I'll see you for lesson 37. Bye.